Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Moran. Today we're going to try to figure out what in the world is Timberborn. What happens when humans disappear and beavers have to fend for themselves? Well, these creatures manage to create quite the ecosystem here by focusing a lot of uh, terraforming and water management as well. Speaking of which, some terraforming happening right there. You will be able to survive all of the droughts and all of the needs will be served for your people. Well, beavers, not people. So let's start with the nitty gritty. As always, we're going to look at the settings here. You got a few settings. Uh, you have your screen resolution and graphics resolution, uh, graphics quality rather. I'm not a huge fan of this, obviously, as you can imagine, I would like to see different settings for everything. And uh, I don't know what this does. I don't know what Ultra does. It's just a uh, draw distance. Is it the graphics? Is it the fidelity, the, the resolution of the textures and all that stuff? I would like to get a little bit of a better control of what to do here. We got show FPS on unlock camera, run in background, UI scale, which is pretty nice. Uh, the tutorial is really quick and to the point. It is really, really short. And you might think, whoa. That was it for the tutorial, uh, not going to show me anything else, because yeah, that's how I felt. However, after playing a while, you're going to get the hang of it. You just have to pretty much dedicate some time to this game, which is what I've done already. I am past the 8-hour mark for this game, and uh, I'm starting to lose my shit a little bit. So I want to make this video and be able to take a break from this for a while. After this, I'm going to be reviewing uh, Gollum, so... I wanted to end it on a good good note, as you can see. Got some input stuff here. You have some uh, volume sliders, which is really nice. Uh, they're all separate, pretty good. Can't expect anything else from that. Uh, it's a little bit more intuitive than the actual graphics menu, but what are you gonna do? Those are the settings. You have uh, save and everything. I don't have a quick save function, which is pretty sad. Hopefully it's added, but like I said, this game is still in early access mode. It's been developed from my understanding from uh, Mechanistry, who is the developer and publisher of this game, since September 15, 2021 at least, that's when it came live on Steam as an early access title. Now, I haven't been keeping close attention to this game, so I'm not quite sure of the progress that it's made, but I will talk about what I've seen so far, and uh, the key was graciously provided by the publisher, so I appreciate that. Let's jump into it. Now, the main thing you're going to be doing in this game is gathering logs. This is my storage for the logs here. Uh, this is the final version of the warehouse, of the storing for the resource here. You start with a small pile, which is going to look something like this. You have a medium pile, which is what this is, and then you have a large underground pile. <coughs> the, the upgrade is quite significant uh the maximum that this can hold is about 180 units and the underground can hold 1800 so it's quickly recommended that you that you upgrade your storages the other type of storage is a warehouse and as you can see here the warehouse can stack and then you have to figure out ways for your creatures to actually get to them so if we rotate the camera here on this side you'll see that i've done a terrible terrible job at <laughs> managing this uh this re this this pathway here the green line indicates that i'm still within my range of the district here i have another district that i'll get to in a second but this is uh how i've decided to create my path not the best i will be the first one to admit this is not the best uh, not my best work. I'm not super proud of it, but what I think I could do is actually move this ladder on this side here. And let me show you what this would look like. So, there, unfortunately, there's no moving of the pieces, which is quite sad. If I do this, however, it's going to allow for my creatures to actually be able to go through this way instead of having to go around. So, I don't really see a huge problem with this because the entryway is here anyway. So they can just go down and get to this fast. Uh, but I don't like how it's limited here, how they can't go to, to a straight shot and go down here. So let's see what building a pathway looks like for this game. So you're going to go into path and structures. You're going to open up the ladder. And do keep in mind that ladders do have to be attached to a road in order to, uh, to function properly and increase the district range. So we're going to go... Um, 
I feel like I should go here in case I decide to do something else with that block. So we're going to do this. We're going to add a path, which is nice. And then we're going to add a platform here. We're going to destroy, hit delete and enter, destroy this piece of ladder here. And then we're going to do another platform and uh, eventually my guys are going to start building this. So now what this does, what this allows me is to create a path here and this connects and goes straight here and then another path here so these guys can access the warehouse that stores the paper. You can quickly change what you're storing this on each warehouse by clicking the item and changing it there. Am I a huge fan of having one resource per warehouse? Not really. As you may have noticed, I only have medium warehouses. I haven't really felt the need yet to actually build a large warehouse, which looks like this. It takes up a lot of space. Here we go. Uh, and sure, I can stack them and have each resource and have a huge tower of uh, warehouses going, which actually would be a cool project to try later on but that's probably something for another for another day I'm not gonna worry about that right now uh, that is eat it for storing now I'm running low on logs how do you collect logs you it's pretty simple you plop this thing down a lumberjack flag and as you can see there's a there's a range so as this range is limited if you try to harvest trees that are further away you're not going to be able to do that so just keep in mind that these trees as you can see here my range is here these trees are not going to be touched by the lumberjack it's actually quite cool because these trees actually also produce chestnuts and uh, pine resin which is necessary to create other stuff so this is my trappers my tappers shack here and as you can see, the range for this one is all the way out here. I was quite confused for a while. I was like, why aren't these guys collecting the pine the pine resin? It's It was showing that it was ready, but it actually needed seven days. And before the seven days are completed, the lumberjack actually comes and chops the tree down, which is not fun. So these guys here, this is ready to be harvested, the pine resin. But I'm actually full on my storage. If you see here my pine resin should be right here i have 200 already and pine resin is actually required to make polished planks or treated planks <clears throat> i say polished because it has that shiny thing here which is a little bit misleading that's that's what you need a uh, uh, pine resin for um i do have plenty of uh, treated planks i believe i have 153 which is going to be here on that storage and I don't need much of it right now, but if I do need more, uh, I have to take the planks and actually treat them. Planks are created by logs. You see where this is going. It's pretty simple. I was actually having quite the water scare earlier. I was running low on water. I, I looked up here and I was like, wow, this is, uh, I think it was just under 100, which isn't fun. If you're, I don't know what happens if my beavers start starving uh, and dying of thirst. And I hope I don't have to worry about that for a while. I do like the mechanic of actually being able to build on top of your uh, buildings. You can actually choose to do some roofs, as I've done here, to increase the attraction of the area a little bit more. Or you can put a terrace. I've done that here. It provides a little bit more entertainment to keep your uh, beavers happy. You also have some campfires and you have some other stuff that you can do, uh, such as a carousel here, which does require power and um what else i think there was something else somewhere here well you got the showers and everything uh there's a lido here they can come and swim and have some fun just just some leisure activity to uh, to keep your crowds happy i'm a 27 right now on well-being this is the highest i've been this is what it looks like here uh if you want to help a little bit more so i need more campfires by the looks of it for my district i think this is district one still I need some more roof terraces, uh, I need more shrubs, I need more roofs, so it's it's a constant battle. Now, if you choose to kind of stagger your buildings like I've I've decided here, so I have a triple lodge and then two triple uh, three, oh yeah, it's a triple lodge on top of some buildings here, uh, you're kind of limiting your uh, roof space, but you are kind of strategizing, strategizing more and uh, taking up a little bit less space, so... The triple uh, lodge can hold nine beavers, I believe, and the regular house can hold only three. 
can house only three. So it's kind of a constant battle. You either gonna have plenty of room to expand or you're gonna have to keep your beavers 100% happy. I've never really had a problem with uh, with this, so you know I kind of I kind of go for uh, more expansion. Honestly, I could build more uh, more campfires here, and I might just do that in the future. But for now, I'm kind of focusing on more resource management here. Now you're gonna see this mess, and you're gonna be like, "What the hell is happening here?" And I am right there with you. In all honesty, I I kind of messed it up in the beginning. So some of the buildings here actually would require power you get power in three different ways um, you can actually build a spinning wheel a manual wheel in which your beavers will go and uh, start running and generate electricity or power rather you have these which are water wheels which are completely and utterly useless when it comes to uh, droughts because there's no current there's no river going through and these are going to be non-functional essentially and you have uh, your windmills. These are some windmills. These are the large windmills. There's there's two different ones. There's a small one and a large one. I've been building the large one since I started building windmills. I think I've only had one small windmill, actually. Either way, I destroyed it. These things here are batteries. So how do batteries work? They are elevated heavy structures. Uh, it's carrying a load here. And the essentially the higher the platform is, the more electricity or power it has stored. So this is a, it's essentially a gravity a battery. It it um, it goes back up once there's no use of resources. So right now everybody's asleep and nobody's using uh, any energy, and therefore the uh, the platform is uh, using this spare generated power to lift up the the crate of rocks or whatever. So when there's no wind and when there's no current flowing to power my, my devices, uh, these things are going to start slowly dropping. And by slowly, I mean very, very quickly because I need a lot of electricity. So the nice thing is that even during a drought, you can have wind. It's not very common, but you can. Now, this is quite the mess, as you can see here. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out how to actually do... Uh, how to manage the pathways of these logs properly in order to uh, to transfer the the power into the buildings I needed. So as you can see, all these buildings need power. What I did not know when I started this game is that if the buildings are connected to each other, they do not need to be connected to the grid. So this was housing, I believe, only three buildings that needed power instead of s six, seven at the moment. Um, because I was taking up a lot of space using these to connect my buildings. Now these will block the pathway, so you're going to have to figure out a way to actually create small bridges for your beavers to, uh, to walk upon and actually get to where they need to be getting. So keep that in mind as you, as you consider your options there. And the main thing that you have to focus, absolutely have to focus in the beginning of your uh, in the beginning of your game is research or science points, research points. So this is the inventor, and this is the observatory. The observatory is going to be collecting a lot more research points. It's going to be ten versus the one, and. Uh, I believe I had three of these and two of the observatories, and um, at some point I had 20k of uh, research, but I still don't believe I've unlocked everything, so there's some roofs that I haven't unlocked, and um, well, that's about it. I think I've unlocked just about everything else, and some floodgates, which I don't really care for, some bridges that I had just recently unlocked, and all that good, good stuff. <clears throat> These buildings are connected, so they don't all need power. Uh, this was from what I believed that uh, all buildings need to be connected to the grid. So I had two of these next to each other, these observatories, and each of these was connected to it. I've kind of left it here because I don't really care for it. Uh, there's a bridge here if, if they want to go over, so it doesn't really impact uh, the quality of life. So that's, that's pretty good. I haven't necessarily messed a lot with the water management 
uh, mechanics of the game. I know there's a lot you can do. You can actually force the water into these valleys and and uh, make them a little bit more fertile. As you can imagine, when there's no water flowing through, uh, there's not going to be any uh, actual fertility on the ground. So I have my water tower here. It's kind of expanding the fertility. Otherwise, if I don't have this, then this area is going to be all dead. And I'm not going to be able to raise my wheat or wheat. Which is important if you want to make bread and have uh, multiple sources of food here and actually keep your keep your beavers happy which is which is really really important where's my bread there's my bread so this is the ingredients and this is the refined food the food that is ready to be eaten you got carrots you got berries you got bread and you got grilled potatoes they will i believe eat the potatoes i'm not quite certain if they're gonna eat them if they're not grilled i've never had to discover that actually uh, and then you have a few more options so if i go here this is my Where's my kitchen? Here's my kitchen, my grill. I have my guys making grilled potatoes, but you also have grilled chestnuts and grilled spatter dock. But I've just kept to the potatoes. That's uh, that's the main mechanic of the game. I, I'm really intrigued. I got really lucky with this settlement because once a, uh, a drought takes place, most of the time there's going to be water here and then water here and then i have a dam here which uh, blocks the water from overflowing from leaving basically up to a certain degree so when it gets to the top i don't know if i can make it visible here yep once it gets to the top it flows over but um when there's no water overflowing what it will do is it will just keep the water here now recently i did have a really really bad drought uh, that actually had no water here and the only water left was here in this area because this actually steps down Right about here. I believe so this that was kind of scary. It didn't last long But thankfully I am good on water. It's pretty nice. I also have a fuel tank because aha uh -huh, what you can do is build bot beavers i have 15 working right now and nine that are idle the idle ones are still going to be doing stuff they're going to be carrying resources and, and whatnot but they do require fuel so once they run out of fuel they are going to need it kind of like water for the bionic beavers so let's get to the districts here this is my district crossing I really like update 4. If I had played this game before update 4, I would be a little bit worried about doing it because there's a lot of micromanaging. But the nice thing about update 4 is when you manage distribution here, you can go between districts, which is nice, and the global view, of course. Uh, you can quickly manage what you're going to be exporting and importing. So for district 1, I have constantly import uh, ruins or scrap, I believe it is called, right? Uh, let's see scrap metal. Yep. There was a big pile of scrap metal here that I created another district to mine Because I thought maybe I wouldn't be able to do it since the district lines are too far And what do I mean by that? Well, it's not entirely necessary to actually create districts. So oh, let me just Do a path here because I forgot And I'm gonna do that. Oh, there's a shrub there isn't there. Yep gonna have to delete the shrub and what I like to do is assess the priority the the and the AI is pretty decent most of the time at knowing what it has to prioritize and do but what I like I love this tool the priority tool if I order my people to actually well my beavers to destroy a bunch of shrubs here so for example if I do if I do this uh, and, and destroy these shrubs I can go in and prioritize this task and as you can see here a bunch of my sh my beavers show up and they're going to start focusing on this task and this is on this um, district however I did see that you don't have to have beavers on this district to help so these were my automated beavers because it was night time there's nothing happening uh, they still came and, and try to help with this stuff <clears throat> and that is actually why you need <laughs> your uh, your little companions to to work overnight Sadly, however, you cannot connect the two districts. So if I go and create a path here, it will tell me districts must be separated by a district crossing 
which is uh, is, is an interesting mechanic. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on that. It's it's fine, no biggie. Let's connect this guy and actually make this bridge functional. So what do you see here? This is the line of the district going bad. This this is the district right here. This is my um, district center, and the district center determines how far the lines can go. This is the main district center. This is from my from my first city. And it kind of only goes up to a certain degree. So it goes all the way up to here, which is nice. So even though the line is red, this doesn't mean that your your beavers are not going to be able to get here. I'm actually going to do this. And then I'm going to destroy the most of these. Because we don't need them. I'm just going to leave one. What is this? This is a mine. What mines do is collect scrap metal from the ground. I believe it is unlimited, unlike the scrap metal here, which is limited, which is nice. So what this means now for me is that I can actually just destroy this district because I don't actually need it. The only reason why I have this district going is because I needed to mine this scrap pile. Now, the sad part is that this, this district would have probably reached it. I'm not quite sure if it would or wouldn't have, but as I can see here from this line, it only goes up to here. I believe it's because of this path, actually. Yeah, that's that's why it is. The more paths you make, the more your district will um, will expand. I, I was told that it's better to have multiple districts. I am not a huge fan of that, in all honesty, so I don't quite worry about it. Uh, to be fair, so that's where I'm at with that. I'm just gonna just gonna let this thing go. This is a dirt extractor, uh, dirt excavator, and a terraforming station. I'm not really making use of these. The only purpose they serve is to actually create terrain blocks. Now, again, if you're gonna be terraforming and directing water in different pathways and all that stuff, yes, that would be useful for me. I wasn't really trying to get in, in that much depth of the game. I uh, My time is very, very limited lately, so the fact that I've sunk two uh, over eight hours in the span of, uh, well, a couple of days, actually, this um, is pretty good. I want to explain this a little bit here. So these are my windmills, and they're connected with the, uh, the power shaft here. And this is a metal platform that is high elevated. I wanted to make it a little bit taller to actually enable more batteries for my gravity batteries, but what you can actually do is use terraforming and destroy the ground underneath it so it can actually go a little bit deeper, which is pretty cool. Not gonna lie, I am gonna do that in the future, just not at this moment. I do like the camera controls, they're pretty nice. If you go down like this, the camera will pan back up there, and I do appreciate the zoom out. Um, in the beginning, I thought it was a lot of zoom out, but as, as your city grows like this, it's I don't think it's enough. I should be able to zoom out a little bit more. Uh, they did say that they improved the frame rate by 80%, I believe, and maybe the limitation of the zoom is to maintain the performance of the game. So now that the game performs a little bit better, I wouldn't mind to, to, to get a little bit more control on that one. Uh, you can use the Wasad keys to navigate, which is what I've been doing. And then if you hold shift, your camera is going to go a little bit faster, which is pretty nice. And that is about it for Timberborn. It's still in early access. Um, I wonder what they're going to be adding more in the game. Actually, they did add a another faction. It's the Iron Teeth. And you have to play the game for 15 minutes to unlock it, so it's not that big a deal. I actually like that they make you kind of play and familiarize yourself with the Iron Teeth. I haven't played the Iron Teeth yet. I want to actually do it and potentially make a, my next video for this game based on the Iron Teeth uh, once the game releases fully from, from Early Access. For now, the game is actually... Relatively inexpensive in all honesty. It retails for $25 or your regional equivalent on Steam. And it's currently on a 20% discount, which is pretty nice. Drops it down to $19.99. USD. I think it's it's plenty of content. Uh, it'll it'll have your head scratching, uh, honestly. There's, there's a lot of stuff to do. There is a tremendous amount of stuff to do. The only thing I haven't figured out what to do with is printing press. 
what am I doing with books? I still have not figured that out. There's nothing on the well-being here. Uh, there's nothing on the science. And for right now, having unlocked everything, I'm ready to delete my science buildings and actually focus on, on other logistical stuff. So maybe uh, a more polished, uh, more polished planks or maybe more planks. Um, I'm not sure how to expand from here, but I might do a little bit more terraforming to kind of unlock this this area uh, and, and see what I can do with that. But for now, this is pretty much it for uh, Timberborn. I'd like to see what else they had with this. And I can only imagine how frustrated I would be if I was playing on the higher difficulty. Wow. This has given me a little bit of a challenge, but for the most part, I am able to kind of uh, set it aside and move along to something else, which is very, very helpful. I actually went and made myself a little bit of lunch, and this was playing on the background. I was kind of not worried that it would it would be fine. You have some error messages here, of course. Building is lacking materials, and that is uh, needing more bot heads. So what we're going to do is going to go to the bot factory, and we're going to make it make some bot heads. The way I keep track of it is here. This is this is my storage for all this stuff, and um, I actually need more limbs as well, which which is very interesting. So there you have it, guys. I hope this was uh, useful. I hope I covered everything, and I actually do like the city builder game. I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.